Hello everyone. So we have discussed the process ID, the pid namespace and the network namespace so far and I hope you enjoyed it. And the next one is probably the most complex one that is the mount namespace. So let's spend some time understanding how a mount system actually works in Linux. Before we jump into the, the workings of mount in conjunction to a container. So the mount namespace, the way in, uh, in which it works is there might be multiple mounts that the kernel launches at the beginning of the system. Mount points that the kernel launches at the beginning of the system start. Uh, and all of them are started in something called a private mode. So as you can see here, you know, when the system starts, there are multiple mount points here. And some of this may be, might have been created by the system admin, some of them might have been created by the shell. So let's forget about all those things for the time being. But when the system starts, the kernel makes the, all the mount points private. So what it essentially means is all the mount points that are start, started at the beginning will not be available in any other namespace that's, that gets created during the course of the workings of the, of the application. Now, this is good, but there's a catch here. Unfortunately or fortunately, what happens is, though the kernel makes the, the mount namespaces private, during the system boot process, the system D daemon gets started immediately after the after the launch of the init process and it takes all these mount points which the kernel has created in the private mode and makes them all shared. Now we have to understand this whole concept with an example. So let's look at a C program, simple C program where you know I'll take all the mount points and I'll show that you know we'll, the system launches with all the uh, kernels uh, mount points and when we spin off a child process we can see that the ent entire set of mount point available within the parent is available in the child process as well irrespective of the fact that you know the child is in a new namespace so let's see that first so what i do is you know uh, since we are working with the proc we might have to probably work with the proc file system i may recommend highly recommend people to use uh, 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 what is that? Uh, a virtual machine so that you know your actual machine doesn't get messed up. So let's see. So let me see this. These are the mount points that you can see at the bottom. You can see you know there's some wire lay blocker and overlay GFS, F FSD, and all this stuff. Now I have written a program here. So let's go to the program. So the program name is. mount shared now what let's quickly have a look at what this program is actually doing you know now the, what this program is doing is at launch we have it clones so you know the, the system call is remains the same for creation of a pit namespace or a network namespace and now in this particular case we have the mount uh, namespace created through new ns now you know there this might be a a uh, bit confusing because you know probably you would have expected the namespace name to be something like mount namespace or new mount or whatever but uh, just uh, get it for, into your head that you know that's not the case and if you want to create a mount na namespace you will have to actually use something called new ns now you'll clone the process and once you come inside what i'm actually doing is you know i am executing a process so along with the with, with the creation of the uh, amount namespace what I'm doing is I'm telling my application to take some uh, some other application and launch it as part of the exec process so what I'm going to do is you know when I run this application when I say dot slash a dot out I'll pass mount as an application that I would want my application to fork exec and run so you can see that you know what are the mount points available within the child namespace in the process now one interesting thing that you might want to notice here is this unshare command so you know though we have created the clone in the 
in the uh, of the we have, though we have created the clone of the actual process in order to actually say that you know put this child process into the new mount name space or other in associate the new mount name space with the child and just ignore the parents mount name space we'll have to use this unshare command so what i do here is you know um, i go to the folder i say cc mount share dot c and i'll run so i'll need a sudo to run dot slash a dot out and i'll say i'm passing mount so you know i want this a dot out to fork itself and then run the mount command and i type these values in and you can see that you know the exact same processes exact same processes that were available as part of the uh, the original shell or original parent uh, i mean in the, in the case of parent are available in the child name space as well so we know that you know this this is not what we intended we wanted to have our own isolated space right we wanted to have, wanted to have our own isolated space for the child the child uh, so how do we do that so you understood that you know everything that is available here gets shared with the with the child so we don't want that to happen we want our child to be completely independent of the uh, of the parent process so let's get back to the let's get back to the document so now we know that that's not what we what we want uh, so as you can see here you know the parent process starts with these name spaces slash home slash mnt first slash home slash mnt slash first when the clone actually happens all the amounts are copied as it is from the parent into the clone or other are shared you know i'll not say it's a copy but in it's it gets shared between both both the child process and the parent process and that's something which we do not want it's, there's some issue here now we know that you know when the parent gets <coughs> started the parent process gets started we have the child inherits all the mount points from there and we unshare the uh, the names child name space which essentially means that now the child process is independent of the parent process and when the new mount gets created what we can see is since the child is independent of the parent we have added a new mount point here called third and that third mount point is independent of the parent process so this is what we actually want to happen and how do we achieve that so that is that's one of the questions that we we may have to ask so let's go back to the previous code and let me show you how you actually do that so in order to do that in linux what we have to do is before making the unshare call to the new namespace what we have to tell is you know make my root the child's root private and do it recursively so this is essentially what we are doing here so as you can see here what we are doing is the clone happens the child has been cloned and the process that we want to run as part of this cloning process after once the child gets cloned is entered and then there we are actually making the root file system of this child private and we are doing it recursively now this essentially means that now my child all the all the uh, mount points within my child starting with the root will all be private that will not be visible in the parent parent process namespace and we unshare the unshare the namespace which essentially means that now we have linked the or rather attached the child names child with the new mount namespace and just to just uh, justify or you know, just to demonstrate what we actually done i have created a private namespace i you know i kind of unmount the proc namespace using none and then relaunch a new proc namespace for the child and then also i create a dev pts namespace for the child the one one is one point that i want you to be wary of is then is interesting is this ms underscore mgc underscore well flag 
so this is essential because you know uh, so we are actually creating a new mount point called dev pts so all it's a device file as we understand it right everything is in that slash dev folder is a device file so we don't expect any processes to be exact from there so that's what we are doing here we don't want any process to be exact here and we are also saying that you know if there is any uid or gid flags set along with this process we don't honor that so you know we, we don't honor the one that is coming from the parent to the child we rather we'll rely on whatever is available on the child and there's a magic number so this i thought was deprecated but on the ubuntu system that i'm currently running this application in this flag is mandatory so without this flag this application does not run so i create a private namespace called dev pts so this is private to the child right it does it's, it will not be visible in the parent and so is the case with the other pts ptmx namespace and this is also private to this particular child and it's not available in the parent the namespace anywhere so let me run this application so let me compile cc mount.c and i say sudo dot slash a dot out mount and you can see that you know the child i am printing the mount namespaces slash dev slash pts on so it's available it's something that is available in the child let us go and see if it is available in the parent as well so let me do a mount here and you can see it's not available and you can search for those oh, sorry so the one that we created just now is not available so the essence of the mount namespace is to make sure that we don't pollute the global namespace with the namespace for of the container or the child process now i have been using this word called child process and container synonymously so so what i essentially mean is when we spin off a docker container and launch us as an independent process on your host machine on the or on the guest machine the next part the next important part to it is you know whatever we do there does not get that does not manifest in the the in the host os or the guest os right we want anything any kind of pollution that is happening to be contained within the container process and that is how this mount namespace works so so we, earlier we said sometime back we said that you know we don't use ch root or other docker does not use ch root for containment for creating a, creating an isolated space right now this is how it does it so it creates mount points that are not visible outside the container scope and it creates something similar to jail but not really a jail so ch root is a file system jail this is a mount point jail right so so this is how docker kind of you know delinks the container process from the global namespace i hope you understood this complex concept thank you for listening